on this week's show. Logan Aldridge has his premier run on the tread and Jess King's baby is born. Plus, new artist series with Taylor Swift, Mariah Carey, and rumors of the tread finally coming to Australia and much, much more. Welcome to Pillow Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. Here are your hosts, Amanda Siegel and John Pruitt. Welcome to episode 109 of Pillow Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. I am your host, John Pruitt, joined as always by my co-host, Amanda Siegel. Hey now, Amanda. Hey, John. How are you? I'm doing good. Back to yeah. uh, normal this week after Thanksgiving. Hopefully you had a nice holiday. I did. I did. I had a great holiday. It was a nice um, nice weekend with the kids. Everybody was home. Um, that's always fun to have everybody around. And um, yeah, it's um, been a little bit crazy. Uh, Roa arrived on Monday. So um, have the Roa. Unfortunately, I, um, like an idiot, pulled something out in my shoulder on the weekend um, so I haven't been able to do too much rowing. I did jump on on Monday. Um, and John, you were right. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> um, it's tough. But, yeah. It's different. I'm, I'm starting to get used to it, you know. But I do like, I will say, I do love in a lot of the classes where you almost have a, a little break where the metrics, they pause and then you're just, you're working on your, it's, I guess they're called form, form breaks. Or drills. I think they were calling drills. Drills. Were they saying drills? Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's kind of a yeah. nice break, you know, whereas if I don't want to stop and, you know, my metrics go to, go way down, you know, during that little period, those, those are nice to have. So. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't um, done anything with the girls yet. I've just been um, rowing with the boys. So I did uh, a warm up with Adrian and um, Alex. I really like Alex. He's um, good. I just love, yeah, he's just, I love how technical he is, how he explains. Um, but it's definitely going to be something I think, you know, we said before we started the show that you kind of use it after a workout. And I think that that's probably what I would do too. But yeah. just chatting to community folks and, you know, chatting to people that have gotten it, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, you know, you look at your output and you think, okay, and I didn't even break a sweat. And yet you do, you feel it. There's no question yeah. that you feel it. Felt yeah, I don't sweat as profusely so far. I haven't sweated as profusely as I do on the tread or bike. So it's just different. Right. Um, right. But I've, I've been comparing myself and my output is, and I'm, I have it set on medium. The, okay. The... Um, Tension. I forget what the the, the setting yes. is called, but I have it right yes. kind of at medium, which is, I guess, the okay. default. Um, but my outfit's been pretty good compared to what uh, others that have taken the classes that I have taken so far. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's just an adjustment. But I have to say, I know there's still people that are complaining. I mean, I had um, so I had JB Hunt deliver mine, um, and they were outstanding absolutely mm. outstanding. In fact, they moved my bike for me because I decided to put my row kind of in the middle in between my bike and my tread. And they moved my bike for me with no, you know, no problem. They waited until I was, you know, up and running. They helped me kind of log on. Um, so I was very, very impressed with the service. Um, there were three guys that came out, um, very chatty and um, it was awesome. So I have to say, I know nice. that, you know, just reading some of the notes, you know, reading some of the, the stuff online, people haven't had great experiences with some of the delivery stuff. Yeah, um, people have been posting, I've noticed on the official Peloton member page on Facebook, s some folks have just had p three boxes just dropped off and then they say, oh, no. well, Peloton will reach out to you. So that's kind of disappointing because I've seen that happen with tread deliveries, but now it's like with the rower, it's starting all over again. So yeah, yeah there's definitely some yeah. frustration with that. And um, hopefully they now better onboard the delivery teams, you know, because my team, that was their first time putting it together. They didn't, you know, put it together at the warehouse or, you know, test it out or anything. So that was just the wow. very first time for them. And they struggled with the monitor. 
But fortunately, they didn't put my seat on backwards or any of the other issues okay, that some yeah, folks have yeah. had. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've heard that too. Well, actually, I'm interesting enough, my team, my team had actually set up the row at the Tyson's Corner location, the Peloton uh, store okay. in, the, in Tyson's Corner. So they had actually, and they had been part of kind of the launch. So yeah. they knew what they were doing, which was great. And and yeah. I actually had to even change. I, I messed up my delivery. I had delivered, I had my delivery set for the week before, but um, was having, you know, I'm doing this renovation at home. So I was have had contractors there and I, they just couldn't come in. So I, at the, that day I changed it and they scheduled me for a, just a week later and they were fantastic. So yeah, I hope you folks that are still waiting on yours, um, you know, get, get it and, and have as good an experience, um, you know, as, as I've had, but I'm looking forward to getting hopefully by next week, the my, my shoulder pain will have eased a little bit and um, I'll be able to kind of really get into it um, when I'm when I'm back in Maryland and, and doing it. Yeah. So well, um, I will say before we jump into the rest of the intro, I will say that so far, Katie Wong is my personal favorite on the row platform nice. and Jackson has been using it quite often, maybe more than uh, me. And he loves Katie. Um, John, so, that's amazing. That's and amazing. I will and he's say, doing good. He's doing, yeah, he's doing really well. And I will say that the calluses that you will start to incur, um, yes. very normal. Cause I asked Katie and Ash on a recent Instagram live about that. You know, if they were, they don't wear gloves and Katie used the expression. She says, you want to feel the cookie, which is basically like the feeling of the grip of the handlebars. Yeah. Um, and they showed their calluses on the live. Like that's like a badge of, of honor with them. So Got it. I didn't feel as bad, Got it. you know, having these new, uh, these new wounds, these new scars from the machine. So I'm sure folks are in the same boat with their with their calluses on their hands. Uh, with that, <laughs> folks, before we get started with the news, <laughs> we'd like to remind you how you can keep up to date with all of our content across all of our platforms. Every episode is released on our YouTube channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand side of the video and hit the notify button so that you never miss an episode. Yep. And if you want to listen to us while you're on the go, you can find us on all traditional podcast platforms. Just search Pillow Buddy TV. Make sure you subscribe and click that little bell so you never um, miss an episode or an update. And also please leave us a review. If you enjoy the show, we love receiving those five-star reviews. We love to read a lot of the feedback and the, the praise that we receive from you. So keep that coming. Yeah. And of course, folks, we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Just search for Pillow Buddy and like, follow us on those platforms for all of the latest news. And now, John, let's get on with the show. First, let's do a rundown of the latest Pillow news. Before we get to the main part of the show, we had some news that broke on Friday we wanted to let you know about. Friday afternoon, Daniel McKenna and Peloton filed documents with the New York State court system, notifying the court that they planned to dismiss and withdraw the wrongful termination lawsuit that Daniel McKenna had filed against Peloton. The documents were filed jointly by Peloton and Daniel and were filed with prejudice, which means that the same claim cannot be brought against Peloton by Daniel. Peloton provided a statement from their senior VP of Global Communications, Ben Boyd. This is what Peloton had to say. Peloton is pleased to report Daniel McKenna withdrew and dismissed his lawsuit against Peloton and Jen Cotter with prejudice earlier today, Friday, December 2nd, 2022. We were extremely saddened and surprised by the original news of the filing. To be clear, Peloton and Jen vehemently denied and intended to vigorously defend against the allegations. Fortunately, there will be no need for that. Peloton's focus continues to be empowering our members to be the best versions of themselves anywhere, anytime. The official document filed with the court said essentially the same thing, but in legalese, that Peloton and Daniel agreed to dismiss the claim and it was withdrawn and without prejudice, there were no attorneys, fees, or cost. There's not expected to be any further comment uh, besides the one provided by Peloton about this. At the time the, the documents were filed, all of Daniel McKenna's classes were still available on the Peloton platform. However, within hours of the documents being filed, all of Daniel's classes were removed. There are around 30 running classes, 30 tread boot camp classes, and over 100 strength classes that were removed. They are not expected to come back, and members have been talking on social media about this removal. 
We don't expect that there'd be more to this story, but if there is, we'll be sure to let you know in the coming weeks. And with that, back to John, Amanda, and the rest of the show. All right, so first up in a video shared to social media um, showing members of the Peloton um, instructor team gifting Logan Aldridge various items as he prepared uh, for his tread launch, which just happened this past Wednesday night. Um, he was just, um, you know, just recently premiered. He had a, I think it was a 30 minute uh, premiere run, which 20. had several, 20 minute. It was a tw- 20 um, minute, yeah. Went down on Wednesday night, the 30th of November. Several instructors were in the studio for it, cheering him on. Um, but it was interesting of all the instructors in the video, um, they were all tread instructors with the exception of Callie Gullickson. Um, so it was interesting that could that be a little coincidence or maybe a hint that Callie could be one of the new additions to the tread team soon. Um, it's unclear, but I know a lot of folks were speculating. Everybody looks into every little detail. Don't we all? Um, Don't so we closely, all? <laughs> you know, looking for some sort of hidden meaning or Easter egg in anything. <laughs> So um, it could it could be quite possibly it could just be Callie was like around in the studio at the time when they were um, gathering those little snippets of different instructors, um, you know, giving gifts because Adrian, it was funny, like Adrian gave he showed up one of his, you know, shirts, uh, his signature, you know, tank tops. Uh, Kirsten Ferguson had a pair of her sunglasses that she likes to wear. Um, I was trying to think of one of the other gifts. Oh, Maddie had a set of a very colorful rainbow nail, fingernail extensions. Obviously, that was a <laughs> gift from Marathoner because he, he said from his friend in New Jersey. Marathoner is a, uh, a Short Hills, New Jersey resident, as, uh, as she has you know, said in different classes that she's taught. Um, but Logan, um, just a little background, he officially launched with Peloton as an instructor um, this past June of 2022, but he first joined Peloton um, prior to that in 2021 as a consultant. So he wasn't public facing teaching classes the way he does now. But, um, you know, in addition now on the tread, he teaches strength, hit cardio um, and running um, as of just, you know, this past Wednesday night when he launched. But um, it's unclear whether he'll teach tread boot camps um, since he has strength in his portfolio currently. Um, there's not any uh, classes with him on the Tread Bootcamp as of right now, um, but he did also recently release a new adaptive strength training program, and he uh, he held a virtual community event um, back on the 29th. Um, and Logan's the fourth existing Peloton instructor to be added to the Tread team in recent weeks. He joins um, new additions Hannah Frankson. Alex Toussaint and Camilla Ramon, who also just um, joined the Tread team uh, recently. I have to tell you, I um, I didn't run his run. I walked, um, but it was pretty moving. You know, he spoke of how how his um, you know how how he lost his arm. Um, very open about it. Um, loved how he shared that story, and it was actually very moving. Um, I mean, we we've, we've certainly spoken about it on the show before. But he was in a boating accident and a wakeboarding accident um, when he was just thirteen, and um, you know we we hear him, and I think his group his. Uh, fan group is called It's Just an Arm. And that was one of the things his mom had said to him, I guess, in the ambulance on the way to the hospital um, was, it's just an arm, Logan. We'll we'll be okay. And um, it is pretty, it is pretty awesome to see somebody go from, you know, especially as a teenager, can you imagine being 13 and, you know, losing, losing your arm um, and then having to kind of face the world and yet look how he has. So Peloton, I think, um, did an amazing thing by bringing him on the platform. And it just showed yet again, you know, bringing him now onto the tread that, you know, you can do hard things. People can do hard things and he has proved it. So I have to say, I think that he he killed it. He killed his premier run. Um, it was amazing. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing him, yeah, on the platform. I think he's going to be hard. You know, I don't think he's going to... I haven't worked everything. out with him that much. He, what kind he, of music yeah, is he normally? He had everything. He had a little bit of everything. He had a yeah. little bit of everything. There wasn't anything. There wasn't any specific genre. And he said, like, he kind of played 
songs that pertain to like him. I'm trying to think of the one song that he used and he said this is so apt for for me and who I am. It could have been mama mama could have told me or I'm sorry I should have I should have known that. I'll I'll take a look and see. But um no, I was what is musical. Yeah. Pieces. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I must just, I must be honest. I hadn't worked out instrument. I mean, then again, I don't work out with anybody in strength, which is a whole other discussion for a whole other time. Um, but as both. far as um, yeah, I know, I know. We're we're in the, we're in the camp together. Um, yeah. But um, I'm just going to take a look because there was one. I mean, he had a little bit of Lizzo in there. He had a bit, little bit of um, uh, Maniskin, Lucas Graham. Um, Mama said that was that was the song that he had said with Lucas Graham, um, you know, and it was just very apt for for his um, for his story that he was telling. But um, yeah, it was it was good. So looking forward to seeing where he um, where he goes next. Oh. And I guess um, yeah. So next up is there's another Pello baby that has come into the world um, on Wednesday, the 16th of November at 4:23 a.m. Jess King gave birth to baby boy Lucian Eurista King, who will be known to all as Luz. Um, Jess and her partner Sophia Eurista announced Luz's birth on Instagram, saying that he is the happiest, sweetest, sweetest, most delicious delicious little boy. Uh, we're so thrilled for uh, for Jess and Sophia and certainly wish them only joy and happiness with their new bundle of joy. Um, and I guess next up will be Selena. We're all waiting with bated breath. I know she's damn ready. I, I was yeah. just actually chatting with her. I was chatting with her on, on social the other day because she was just saying how she is cooked and how she's done. And then I think she felt guilty that she was complaining. And she said, you know, folks, I am very grateful for, for you know, for being pregnant, for doing what I am, but I am just done. Um, and I think <laughs> she's had a hard pregnancy. You know, everybody, you know, she, I guess she was so nervous that people were going to say, don't be ungrateful that you're having a baby and, you know, whatever. Um, so she came back and she said, I'm very grateful, but I'm done. And I don't blame her. You know, you get to a point, especially when you're active and you can't be quite, you know, as active yeah, as you used to be. Uh, I'm sure she feels cumbersome getting around. Um, right. I was chatting with her. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spill the tea, but I do know, I will be saying I was privileged enough to find out the gender ahead of time. She did let oh, me know. Oh, look at you, it's a, sec it's a secret, though, because she <laughs> says she you know, doesn't want to spoil it and have it be a surprise for everyone else. But I get it. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm, I'm in the circle. I'm in the circle of trust mm. in the nest. Look at you, Prue. Because uh, well, I was asking her when she might tea. be back. Um, yeah. And she said the latest would be April, but she just just all you know, she okay. wants to have some bonding time with the baby. But um, yeah. everyone, yeah. everyone misses her. It's been really her. cool. Yeah. It's been really cool seeing the mamas um, share, you know, share their journeys with Chelsea and Rebe and um, Bex and uh, Anna, Anna and yep. now Jess. Um, and it's just wonderful to see them all share their journeys. And you know what? And just be honest and brutal. I mean, Bex has also said it's been tough. It's tough being a mom and it's tough bringing, you know, a child into the world. And especially when you're on a platform like they are, you know, in the public eye and, it's not all rosy, but um, especially the first been, couple been, weeks, those are not fun. And I'm I'm speaking as the dad who doesn't really do anything, but those were some sleepless right. nights when Jackson was first born, and and I know they've echoed that same exactly. sentiment um, recently. So uh, yeah. It's well, tough. I love Chelsea. I love Chelsea Jackson Roberts' recent um, TikTok that all of real that she put on there, um, where she was throwing diapers at her husband and saying, you know, something about, you know, first time he was going to be changing a diaper, and she didn't see this going very well. But you know, that's, that's the you know the, the the realistic approach to having a baby. And kind I of, do not you know, miss those days. Shoot, I'll tell you that. Right? Tell me about it. Uh, but anyway, um, wonderful news, and we're thrilled for Jess, and we're waiting for bated breath. Um, for Selena. Great. Well, moving on, uh, we had a lot of people show up for the turkey burn classes that went down on Thanksgiving. Um, the live turkey burn, um, uh, Thanksgiving Day turkey burn classes have historically been uh, some of the most popular on the platform. And we had two live classes. Alex had his 30 minute uh, premiere live turkey burn run. That went down on Thanksgiving morning, followed by Robin's 45-minute turkey burn ride that she did. 
Alex had almost 15,000 people on his uh, run, and I think that's just counting. That isn't us. That isn't factoring in folks on the app, um, digital. Um, that's folks on a Tread or Tread Plus. Um, it topped out around um, 14,000. Four- oh, that is digital too. Okay, thank you. Control room, 14,400 members live on the leaderboard. So this set a new record for most people in a Peloton Tread class ever. And Robbins um, also was quite popular. There was more than 43,740 members um, on her ride that morning. The second most popular in, in 2020, when we were you know right in the middle of the beginning of the pandemic, uh, that set the record at just over 50,000 members on um, her turkey burn ride, which is still a record that holds um, today. 2021, the numbers slightly declined from the prior year um, with just over 35,000, you know, folks started, you know, getting out more, obviously, and yeah. weren't, as, uh, weren't as confined, you know, during, you know, quarantine there early on. Um, but there have been some concerns whether, you know, the servers would be able to handle. And I don't remember in the in past Thanksgiving Day, I don't remember really it ever crashed, you know, having major issues. So um, there weren't really any major issues reported by Peloton or by members this past Thanksgiving with uh, with either live class, um, I didn't have any issues, but um, you know, we have seen several server crashes um, around popular events. You know, when the Lizzo was live in the studio, and back in October when Babyface was in the studio for his artist series, there was a lot of problems with um, folks getting shut out or their, their stream freezing. Uh, but no issues this past year that were reported that were right widespread. Um, awesome. You were also able to, you know, I got my Turkey Burn badge. Um, you're able to, you, you've earned a Turkey Burn 2022 badge if you took any of those classes for either two of the, the Turkey Burn classes. But, um, you know, we also have the, the list of, of badges um, and how you can complete them on PelloBuddy.com if you want to see the, uh, the whole assortment of beautiful badges um, that are out there and, you know, current and past. Uh, but it was a fun, I, uh, I loved the run. It was um, it was tough. It was really hard. Um, I did hit a PR, and um, it was everything that I would would have expected. But on the tread with Alex, because um, he did not make it easy, and um, it was great. I look forward to running with him more on the, yeah. on the tread platform. I did, I did the run. I did the run. Unfortunately, I actually had to pick Mark up from the airport, so I wasn't able to do the ride um, yeah. live. But I did the both. run was. Amazing. Yeah, I was bummed. I was I was like, seriously, dude, you, you booked your, you, you know, you booked to fly in at that time. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, the, the run was amazing. And, you know, I don't work out with Alex much, but I really enjoyed it. I have to say, I thought it was fantastic. But yes, it was hard. Definitely was a, a hard, a hard run. Um, All right. Well, moving on. Um, With the end of the year, we can always anticipate amazing artist series classes. Um, And you know what? Peloton have certainly done it again. Um, In the past two weeks, um, they have brought us some pretty cool ones. The week of November the 25th, Peloton officially announced a new Taylor Swift artist series with music from her latest album, Midnight's. Um, although this didn't come as a surprise to um, most of us, because earlier in November, Olivia Mata had specifically mentioned her tra- Taylor Swift Midnight's core class in one of her other classes. Um, we know that this ha- definitely made Swifty fans very, very happy. And as everybody knows, you know, it kind of dropped around the same time where people were trying to get into her concerts and were having the most horrendous time in trying to do that. So maybe that that helped ease some of the pain of not being able to get into one of her concerts, but getting to do her workouts on the, on the platform. So there was tons that was dropped. Um, a 20-minute course Strength with Olivia, a 20 minute um, row boot camp with Katie Wong, um, a 10 minute um, arms and light weights with Kendall. We also saw a 30 minute run with Susie, a 30 minute ride with Ali Love, a 20 minute full body with Callie Gullickson, and a 30 minute yoga flow with Mariana Fernandez. And then our German community were not left out. They had a 30 minute run with Marcel, a 30 minute ride uh, with Myla. We did Kent. Um, 
And then to kick off the holiday celebrations, Peloton announced their next much anticipated artist series with the queen of Christmas herself, Mariah Carey. So Mariah actually personally announced the series on Peloton's social media, stating that it will showcase not only her holiday music, but her entire catalog. So that series launched this past Friday, December the 2nd, and included 11 classes across seven modalities in both English and German. So it included a spectacular two-for-one run with Cody and Emma. We also got a bar class with Ali Love, a walk with Rebecca Kennedy, a row with Adrian Williams, a flow with Ross Rayburn, a run with Kristen Ferguson, as well as a full body strength with Jess Sims, and then a cool down that dropped on demand and it was a ride with Hannah Frankson. The German community got a run with Jeffrey, a bodyweight strength with Marcel and a ride with Mila Lazar. And I know for Jeffrey, this was kind of a dream come true. He was so unbelievably excited about having the opportunity to do this. So it was amazing just to see their entire, they're just pure joy when they get to do an artist series where the music means so much to them. Um, so Peloton had actually issued a blog post regarding the, the collaboration with Mariah and they stated Mariah carried evokes the power of the holiday season, which is all about celebrating and showing gratitude for your loved ones and community. We toast the power that music has in joining us together by bringing Mariah Carey's iconic music to the Peloton platform. Our members have been waiting for this moment and we can't wait to see how they respond to this epic class series. So we have all been speculating, as you know, John, that this was coming. Some people believe like our friend Melissa from Moms of Peloton, that Mariah was going to waltz into Cody's finale of his LOL series. Um, but we know that Mariah had, in fact, teased on her inter- Instagram um, in her annual It's Time video with her riding yeah. on a Peloton bike. So it made sense that something was going to be happening. Um, I must be honest, I think I was on um, on Melissa's kind of camp, thinking that she was going to be that final. And, and you'll obviously talk about who is the next um, guest on, on Maddie's LOL. Um, but yeah, I, I think a, an artist series is far more fun. And to get her to be able to present in so many different modalities is awesome. And I'm, so I'm actually I'm excited. more excited. I'm more excited about who the actual guest is for Cody's final LOL, Cody Class, than her. That's too funny. So that's fine. (laughs) But then it works for you. I also thought it was fun how Peloton, um, the social media team was up late because they posted about the Taylor Swift Midnight's artist series at At midnight. midnight. Yes. (laughs) Which was amazing. And you're right. I I missed that out. But you're absolutely right. They did do that, which was amazing. And a lot of people were were up for that and didn't miss it because there was a lot of comments, a lot generated as soon as they oh, posted about it. So oh, that's too funny. Yeah, too folks funny. were folks were tuned in. Yeah. Well, uh, moving into LLL Cody, um, as you said, the last episode went down. Um, it dropped Thursday night, this past Thursday night. Um, but um, an interesting thing, there was a LOL Cody rap party. Um, Peloton hosted an in-person rap party for that final episode of LOL Cody uh, wrapping up the series. The rap party went down Friday evening, December 2nd, and members were invited by email. Um, The invitation was extended to members apparently who were scheduled to take classes that Friday at Peloton Studios New York um, that evening or earlier that day, or who who had previously taken an LOL Cody class, because I had a friend um, told me she was going to the rap party and she was uh, scheduled for the two for one uh, to take the two for one. Nice. My friend, my friend Pello Jennifer, that's her leaderboard name. She lives in New York, so she's a local. Uh, so she gets to drop in whenever she wants. Must be nice. Um, but the party uh, included a viewing of the final episode, which is kind of funny. You just like sit, I guess, in a, a green room or a room, a lounge, and just watch the last uh, ride (laughs) on TV. Um, It included light snacks, a champagne toast. Um, So you did have to be 21 or older uh, to attend. So there was an age requirement. 
and an appearance from Cody Rigsby there at the at the party. Um, and due to limited capacity, invited members had been instructed to RSVP to secure their spot. Um, and in addition, Peloton also announced the final special guest um, for this season of LO Cody. And it is ac uh, actor and Saturday Night Live star Bowen Yang. Um, and Peloton shared the news via Instagram stories. And Bowen himself also posted a funny reel on Instagram uh, promoting his guest appearance and um, unveiling a little gift bag that Cody had provided to him. And it was, it was all this like random stuff. Um, he took first, the only normal thing was an LOL Cody mug, which actually in the apparel store, there's now some LOL Cody um, apparel. There's a mug, yes. there's a, a long sleeve crew neck shirt, and there's a black t-shirt um, with the LOL Cody uh, logo on it. So check that out if you haven't picked those up in the apparel store. But he, he took out a mug and then he took out the the bag with like the Peloton bike manual and the little tools, you know, the Allen wrench key. Oh and, yeah. You know, and he, he started looking puzzled. He goes, Okay, I already have the bike, so I already have this. And then he just he took out some other like there was a bottle of like Tylenol, um, some antacid. And so then he was getting real confused. And then he took out a note and the note from Cody read Sorry, the Swifties broke into my house. Uh, Got to run. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Bowen, uh, Bowen Yang, he is also the co-host of the La, uh, Las Culturistas podcast. Um, he hosts that with Matt Rogers, who is also uh, reportedly to be in the studio um, for that last um, LOL Cody ride. Um, but in case you missed it, Cody, not too long ago, he was on a uh, interviewed on an episode of that podcast, and it is probably the funniest um, Peloton instructor interview podcast interview I've I've heard because it's not a typical interview like how'd you get started, your background. It's just Cody like shooting the shit, talking about all things pop culture, recent events, Taylor Swift. Um, which has been kind of polarizing lately. He, Cody seems to be getting some backlash for his hate about um, Taylor Swift. There was a recent BuzzFeed article that was oh, giving, really? him hard, uh, giving him a hard time, really like criticizing him for hating on her so much lately. Uh, but a really Ooh. funny podcast episode. I really enjoyed that one. Um, but uh, I'm really, you know, I'm looking forward to taking um, taking that ride. I'm surprised that Peloton's kind of allowing that for him to be so vocal about it, considering they're doing this artist series with her and, you know, had yeah. done past artist series, you know. I wonder, yeah, I wonder if they've like sort of gently like nudged him saying, yeah, hey, maybe you might want to cool a little, yeah, little bit. Right, or, you know, right, it's right. Just, or if they just let him just go wild and yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a good point. Because I know yeah, a lot of people are yeah. bothered. He He posted a clip on... TikTok, where he was at the uh, American Music Awards in LA, and he was saw that. like he was yeah. like center on the floor, maybe third row, and this friend that went with him, um, Taylor Swift had won some awards. Everybody's cheering for him, and the friends like screaming for him. And then he turns to Cody, and Cody looks at the phone at the camera and just gives this like smug face, like really. And yeah, people were pretty yeah. like people left some nasty comments um, to him on that TikTok video about you know, like you know putting down someone so you know successful female artists artists. So they really piled on him for that one. They yeah, were, what's they it, were, what is his issue with angry. her though? Where where did that come from? So just, he, it's it's from it. So he dated it. There's a few things. He dated an ex that was a big Taylor Swift fan. So I guess after they you know had a had a breakup, which probably didn't end. And well, well, he was turned off by that. And he's also, he's also criticized her voice that she's not that strong of a singer. Um, even though his favorite artist is Britney Spears and, you know, right. she lip syncs Hello. all the time. Hello. Um, <laughs> he's criticized her from like going from one relationship to the other. Um, but then again, that's kind of like, that's kind of old hat at this point. She's been with someone for, for a few years now with the same partner. Uh, but yeah, every now and then he he throws a, a little jab at her in rides. Um, so yeah, yeah, people are people are some people are really bothered by that. Um, I, I think it's all in good fun, but I can see how people are are, are irritated at this point. And uh, yeah, 
Well, I'm curious to see moving forward if Peloton will have a, a say in that and, and kind of tell them, hey, as you just said, yeah, you know, they Cody. Put a gag order on them. Yeah. 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 Um, especially since he, you know, he is so popular um, that, you know, I, I, I get it. I get it. All right. Well, um, we'll go ahead and just move on because um, there are some of you that could be thinking about doing a 5K race. And um, now you've got a little bit of help if you decide to do that. Um, Peloton have added a new 5K pace setter outdoor audio class and collection program designed specifically for you guys that are interested in running a 5K. So this new collection um, is with a coach that will guide you throughout the 5K. So each half mile, the coach checks in um, and helps you kind of ensure you hit your goal pace based on whichever pace class you've actually selected. Uh, the collection was dropped with paces from as quick as an eight mile run to as slow as a 13 mile um, class. Uh, the structure of these classes is the same for each with no countdown, warm up or intro. Um, the class pretty much starts immediately. The first minute though does have um, a quick overview of reminding you to kind of warm up when with um, the last five seconds of the first minute, having the coach kind of count down to the start of the 5K and rec pretty much recommending that you pause the class if you're not at the front of that, you know, of that race, if you're not actually where you need to be to start that 5K. So, um, you know, you, you will be able to earn a special Peloton badge with these classes, uh, but it does give folks a nice opportunity to be able to, and perhaps even work work down, you know, so start at 13 miles um, and then kind of work your way down. So Maddie Majacomo hits the 13 mile mark and then the different instructors through with, with Susie Chan, of course, doing the eight mile, um, the eight mile pace one. Um, mm. Susie does also have a warm up that we, they encourage you to do first. So to kind of do that 10 minute warm up with Susie before you actually start your um, specific pace setting. So um, I have not tried it yet. Definitely something that I'd like to be able to do. Um, and I will probably start out at the 13 mile and hopefully, hopefully get to a 10 minute mile. That would be awesome for me. I don't think I could see myself doing a nine or eight minute. Um, but I think that's an awesome way of getting folks motivated to, you know, just kind of run a five. Okay. Um, and the interesting yeah. thing, obviously, because, because, you know, it's not obviously a 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute um, class, it would be based on the mileage, you know, or the kilometers that you're doing. So, um, you know, your, your, your 13 minute will take X amount and you're, you know, working its way down. So the timing of it would be whatever that, that mile pace that you've, that you've picked. Um, yeah, but yeah, a great, based. a great way to do it. Distance based. Exactly. Ah, so, cool. yeah. Well, uh, Peloton has another brand new collection and class type uh, that dropped on November 23rd. Uh, they launched their new mobility collection, um, which is a series of mobility classes um, designed to increase joint and muscle range of motion. So the new collection, it currently has 13 classes. There are a variety of different focuses within them. Some are full body, upper body, uh, but other classes have a more narrow focus on spinal mobility, wrist mobility, hip uh, mobility, ankles, and feet. Um, it's described on the Peloton website as a specialized series uh, that's designed to help you increase your joint and muscle range of motion as well as improve your posture and overall body awareness. Uh, perfect if you're traveling. Um, there are a few different, uh, several different classes, like I said. Some are taught by Ross Rayburn, Maddie Majacomo, Adrian Williams, Rebecca Kennedy, Hannah Corbin, Logan Aldridge has a 15 minute spinal mob mobility class in there. And Andy Spear has a 10 minute wrist mobility um, as well as a full body mobility from him as well. Uh, so check those out. Uh, at the time of publishing, there didn't appear to be a special badge um, for those classes. Yeah, I actually did. Um, I actually did Maddie's shoulder one um, with the pain that I've been having um, with my shoulder. Oh. It was a 20 minute um, shoulder, shoulder and um, yeah. it was awesome. Um, I am really enjoying working out with Maddie. I got to tell you, he's become one of my favorites. Um, but he, I love just, you know what? I love the way he's so natural. There is absolutely nothing 
fake or false or anything about him. He he, he works you through stuff so well, um, and he's just so unbelievably natural. I, I've been very, very impressed with whatever I've done with him. So, um, yeah, so I did that shoulder one, and I definitely would love to be able to work on some of the other um, that they've dropped. So definitely do that. Well, I've certainly made it no secret how much I love meditation. Um, uh, and there is... Um, some some new meditation material that's also dropped on the platform. So there have been all these amazing little nuggets that have been um, shared with members over the last few weeks, which is just amazing. So for those of you that are not yet hooked on meditation, even after I have told you how fantastic it is, um, they have just introduced a new um, collection called Intro to med. It was actually a program called Intro to Meditation with Aditi Shah. So Aditi has a three-week program um, that she actually teased in her final installment of her Flow and Let Go series, which just ended a week ago. Um, mm. And she said, "I have a surprise for you." She did the flow. She did her flow, and then she did a ten-minute meditation. And she said, "I have a surprise for you guys. This is coming." Um, and you know what? I, I wanted to, especially knowing that we were going to probably talk about it on the show, um, I could never do too much meditation. So I have started the program. I'm almost through week, um, I'm almost through week one. And, um, she really, what I love about it is she really explains to you the benefits of med of meditation and what it really does. And they go through mindfulness and they go through, you know, everything. So, Folks, if, if any of you are on the fence, and I know I, um, and I'll shout her out, um, Daryl and, he um, I'm going to forget her last name, but um, uh, Daryl is somebody that I um, have become friendly with on, on the platform. And she had said, I was doing a milestone, I think it was my 1200th um, meditation. She goes, okay, I'll jump on with you. And she said to me, Amanda, I just couldn't do it. Like with, within a couple minutes, I just was so like antsy and, you know, it's just not for me. So for folks like that, who just kind of need that push and, and, get there because it does, t it's a process. There is no question that it's a process. And um, I love the way Aditi explains the process and, and how one does that. So really excited about that new um, program. Nice. I, uh, I need to branch out. I always go to Ross for most of my meditations, at least sleep, um, because he, yeah. his voice is my favorite to lull me to sleep every time. But I have branched out to Kristen McGee because I've been working with her on, uh, in the, on the yoga side now. I love it. Um, yeah, you said but I that. But I haven't done much with the DT, so I need to check her out. Um, well, speaking of uh, additional drops, we have some new Extra 10 classes. Um, we got a bunch of new Extra 10 classes that dropped this past week. We got an Extra 10 walk with Jocelyn Rule, um, an Extra 10 low impact with Cliff, uh, a hike with Matt, um, sorry, Maddie, or no, Matt Wolpers, uh, ten minute intervals ride with Sam Yo, a ten minute low impact with Tune Day, a ten minute run with Olivia, um, and I've done a, a few of those, and they were just a nice. Um, some of them I used in between classes when I was yeah. taking live rides, um, so it was a nice little add on um, after and between uh, some of my recent stacked um, classes this past week. There's nine total. That's that's six of the. Yeah, I gave you six of them, but there was nine total. Yeah, they're awesome. I have to say, I've really, and I've done that too, kind of added them in between, especially if you're doing like a 2020 and there's a 15 minute break in between them. Yeah. It's great to just kind of, if you don't want to cool down, it's nice to be able to just hop on one of those and then you can still get back into that five minute, you know, the five minutes before the class where they do the pre-show. So um, I've re I just did Jocelyn's new one that, jo that dropped and I loved it. Um, her music was amazing. Um, I've really enjoyed, um, I've only done, no, I did. I did the bike as well. I did a ten minute bike, a couple ten minute bikes, um, but they are they are really great. All right, folks, she's back. Jess Sims fans, she'll be back. <laughs> Jess, well, she will be back. Exactly, she'll be back on Saturday, um, the tenth of December, for her Saturday sixty classes. So, for those of you like um, Jackie Pruitt, who was very irritated that she couldn't do Jess Sims live classes, uh, live Saturday sixties, right, John? 60s. Yeah, she loves doing those. Now she can get back to doing them live because Jess. Um, with you know the college with the college football season coming to an end, um, Jess will now be back 
on the schedule live with her Saturday 60s. So I'm sure that will make everybody very happy. I'm I'm looking forward to her. She, she doesn't really seem to have a lot of live strength lately. She only oh, seems to have a live strength class every, every Sunday morning. And that's been a little frustrating. She has a, a run or a walk in the morning during the week. But I'm, I'm looking forward to her being back to the normal schedule. Um, yeah, but I'm I have sure to it's say, been hard for her traveling and, and you know, yeah, being I mean, all over the place back, and trying to have a schedule. Especially when she teaches on Sunday morning and she basically flies back from, you know, the yeah. West Coast or wherever. So basically she doesn't even get to stay and watch the game that she's, that she's there for. I think she did this past week when she was in Columbus for the Ohio State Michigan game. Michigan. She, it sounded like she stayed on the field the whole time. But I will say I, I have completely enjoyed her on College Game Day. I think she is such a natural on that show and folks love her. And, you know, she's had so much uh, Peloton support from members showing up at each location with custom Jess related signs. And and I thought the the one sign that I really chuckled at this past week from the the game, the Michigan Ohio State game, was someone that had a sign that showed the Michigan block M and the Ohio State O. And it showed the rivalry and Matty Majacomo was a picture of him was under the Michigan block M and Jess was under the picture of Ohio State. And that was like the Peloton rivalry because they love to they love to, you know, bust each other's chops. So that was fun. She, yeah. They showed her reacting to it. But I thought she was, I thought she was great. On uh, She was a great addition, you know, being the, the new, um, one of the new hosts on the show this season on ESPN. So well done. Awesome. Yeah. And um, it looks like we're going to be having some scenic rowing classes from California coming soon from Matt Wilpers and Ash Pryor. Um, so... Um, one of the first set of Peloton Scenic Rows, um, they'll take place in Mission Bay, San Diego, California. So we had previously shared that Matt Nash would be hosting a meet and greet at the San Diego showroom. Um, and they just recently shared that they have spent the week recording some scenic rowing classes on location there. Um, and so one thing also, one little caveat, one thing you should keep in mind is that you should not expect to see a ton of guided scenic classes. So Peloton, um, they have these same type of scenic guided classes for the bike and tread, but they only add two or three um, new classes every couple of months. So um, I think it's safe to say we'll expect the same pace for the new classes um, for guided scenic rows. Because obviously... Um, you know, there's a cost to it. It takes a lot of time to produce, um, to put them together. And I, I would think, especially with on the water, you have more variables, you know, where they're um, trying to row, you know, through current, um, you right. know, wherever they are on location. So it's obviously pretty time consuming and they have to have a whole team there. Um, you know, it's not just like one camera and the instructor, they have a whole group of, you know, people behind the scenes. Um, yeah. But this will likely be a, a um, this is likely just a big differentiator in the marketing between Hydro and Peloton. So Hydro is one of the biggest you know rowing competitors out there in that space. Um, and Hydro recently announced a lower cost model um, and has the majority of their, their classes on various rivers and lakes outdoors. Um, but unlike Hydro, Peloton will have the majority of their classes in the studio. Um, you know, just like members are used to you know, with a bike or tread. So just a little, little different there. Yeah. All right. Well, for all our UK friends who are anxious to get their hands on the Peloton Row, <laughs> um, it looks like it may in fact be released in the UK sooner rather than later. Who knows? Um, Peloton member um, David Dingle had actually reached out to CEO Barry McCarthy to ask about this. And McCarthy replied, so that was pretty cool that he got a response back from uh, Barry directly. Um, and he said that Peloton are walk working towards an international rollout and specifically confirmed plans to bring the rower to the UK. Um, he said to David that they are in certification testing now um, with the rower for the UK, but timing is still to be determined. From what we understand, certification testing with the appropriate UK government agencies would be one of the final steps necessary to be able to release the product in the UK. 
So, um, you know, I know that there are tons of frustrated uh, Brits out there that see us all post about getting our rows and they're like, all right, you know, when when are we going to get ours? Um, but as we know, you know, things have not always been released as, um, as they have been in the U.S. So Germany are still waiting on getting the guide. They don't have access to the guide. And up until just recently, Australia have not had access to the trip. But we can also share, based on a rumor, um, as we don't have any specific details, um, that it may look like the tread will finally be released in Australia. So there's definitely some, you know, rumblings out there that um, that we've seen, or certainly that our Palo buddy Inspector Clouseau has found um, that it will, in fact, be coming to Australia. So I'm really excited for the Australians because I know that they, you know, absolutely ha are waiting with bated breath um, to get their hands on the tread. So there's, you know, they're not even cared about the row at this point. They just want to know about the tread. So yeah, um, stay tuned. To do the, exactly, equipment. exactly. Do they have but, the guide? Um, stay they, tuned. They don't have the guide yet. Uh, they do have they? the guide. I think that okay. Australia have the guide. I think, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, cor control room. Um, but I know that Germany don't have the guide. Yeah. Australia have the guide, um, they just don't have the, the tread, and Germany have the tread, they don't have the guide. So, hmm. yeah, so I guess stay tuned because you know that if we, we, if we know about it, you'll hear it here first. So definitely um, stay tuned for that. Well, shifting, uh, shifting gears a little bit, uh, during Thanksgiving week, Google announced that the Google Health Connect app was being upgraded from early access to beta phase which means all Android users, all non-iPhone users, who wish to try it out can now download it from the Google Play Store. So Health Connect is a way for Android users to share fitness and health data between apps in a secure, easy manner. So with that update, Peloton is now one of the apps supported in Health Connect. So this means that if you wish, you can give Google Health Connect access to view, read your Peloton workouts, share them, um, amongst other apps. So other fitness apps include Tonal, Fitbit, Aura, Google Fit, MyFitnessPal, um, and more. There's currently 13 that are supported. Um, but one thing to note, if Peloton is the only fitness app that you use, you won't see any benefit from this um, currently. Okay. Peloton is not currently importing any using, uh, importing and using any health or fitness data from any other app. So um, even though they'll now have the ability to in the future, if you wish. Um, so the benefit will right now will be if you use one of the other supported apps mm -hmm. and have um, and I've always wished it could automatically include your Peloton data and workouts, um, you can. You can share right. that. It'll basically be integrated with those other apps. Um, so this is similar to how Peloton integrates with Apple Health on the iOS platform, which they have supported since 2019 for the iPhone. And then along the other line, some, some little um, um, noticeable changes on the One Peloton web browser. Um, Peloton has made a couple of small but very useful updates on the web that provide new ways for members to track their workout history. So first, um, and this is not the app. This is on OnePeloton.com if you're logged into your, to your profile. First, when you're navigating to the profile page, members will see clickable arrows in the calendar section. Um, this section, you know, it shows you like, you know, if you have workout history that month, you know, you'll see all the little blue dots for, for each day. Um, it'll show the previous 30-day workout history. However, though, until now, there was no ability to basically scroll back through previous months. Um, a lot of times members would, they would have to imp, uh, export to an Excel spreadsheet to kind of see that full breakdown on their computer if they wanted to do it that way, which is kind of, kind of tedious. Um, but now if you're using the web browser, you can go back and scroll back, you know, as far back as uh, your history goes and you can click those little blue dots now. They're clickable, and you can pull up that day your workout history oh, wow. for that day, wow. which is really nice. 
Um, yeah. Because back, you know, before that, if you were on the app and you wanted to like go back a month you had to just scroll through your workout history and, you know, keep waiting yeah. for it to load and then scroll and scroll and scroll, which, I mean, just could take forever if you want to go really far back in your history, you know, if you have a year's worth of, of workouts. Um, so that's really nice. In addition, you know, the dates on the calendar, I said, are now clickable. So you can click on a specific date. It'll bring you to that's a new page awesome. containing the, the list of classes that you took on that date. Um, and just those classes, nothing from the day before or after. Um, so at the top, you can now, members can click a small little carrot arrow, um, carrot button to the left of the date range to go back as far as you'd like. So you just, you'll see that little um, arrow there at the top where it shows whatever date range you're currently on. Um, nice. Yeah, so it only appears to be available on the web browser, but likely... Um, it'll make its way to other platforms, you know, such as the app and hardware devices. Uh, but you know, obviously, that's going to take some time. Uh, but it is nice to have that option on the web browser, at least. Yeah, very cool. I like that a lot. I really like that a lot. All right. Well, for those of you that love Lane Break, we hope that you had the opportunity to jump on the Flash Challenge last week. The challenge began on November 31st and ended on the 3rd, and it offered members an opportunity to earn a badge for spending time on the bike. Um, if you were able to score um, 300,000 plus points in the lane break ride you were on, you earned a bronze badge. 700,000 points got you a silver. And if you were going for gold, you had to get to 1 million points and you earned a gold badge. So um, there are still tons of folks out there that love lane break. And um, that's just another way of being able to earn your badges, uh, which, which I think is great. There is also a flash challenge in celebration of the holiday season. So take four, six, or eight classes from the holiday collection in December, and you'll receive a bronze, silver, or gold badge for doing that. So that challenge began on Thursday, um, December the 1st, and it does run right through till the end of the month. And as I said, it starts Thursday, December the 1st. Is that just wild that we are in December? <laughs> I, like Sunny just hit me. It's like, oh my goodness, we're in December. But um, that's that's a pretty easy challenge, I think, for anybody to get to gold because um, the holiday classes are always so much fun. And um, there's no question that I'm sure we'll see lots dropping. So there have just been a couple here or, here or there that have been sprinkled. But as we get closer to the holidays, you can you can bet your bottom dollar that you'll see tons of um, you know classes that will be coming. Um, out there and available to members. So look forward to getting those. Nice. Well, we have an insider trading lawsuit um, that recently was filed. Some Peloton executives, most of them are former um, executives, no longer with the company, um, are facing an alleged insider trading lawsuit from an investor regarding the selling of stock around the time of the Tread Plus recall in 2021. Um, the the investor at the uh, center of the complaint is named Krikor Arsenian Arslanian. Um, he's you know central to the complaint. He's claiming uh, he's claiming that both current and former Peloton executives sold five hundred million in stock while concealing safety issues with the Tread Plus. Um, the suit specifically names twelve individuals: Eric uh, Blackford, Black Blatchford. Karen Boone, John Callahan, Jay Hogue, William Lynch, Pamela Thomas Graham, Howard Draft, John Foley, Tom Cortese. Um, I didn't know that Tom Cortese, he's one of the co-founders. I didn't know that he was no longer with uh, Peloton. Um, oh, he's still there. Okay. Uh, Jill Woodworth, she's the former um, CFO. Uh, Haseo Kushi, one of the co-founders, and Mariana um, Garvaglia. Uh, the suit alleges that these top executives were aware of safety issues with the Tread Plus, but rushed to sell off the stock rather than maintaining their fiduciary responsibility to Peloton and its shareholders. The suit details the timeline of Peloton's communications in the spring of 2021, including their repeated assurances that the device was safe and that they did not plan to issue a recall 
Um, Bloomberg Law was the first to report this news, and Peloton did not respond to their request for comment um, at the time of publishing. Uh, yeah, so now um, accessories are available on the apparel, apparel site. So uh, last Thursday, December 1st, Peloton added um, a new fitness accessories section to the apparel website where you would normally you know, purchase your clothing, uh, your Pelo swag. Um, this is notable because Pel- Peloton members can now use the referral codes um, that they would only be limited to using for clothing um, or ex- clothing accessories. Uh, before. So this new fitness accessory section, it includes a lot of the traditional accessories you could only purchase through the main Peloton website. Um, it includes the the new Peloton Alto cycling shoes, the original cycling shoes, dumbbell weights, the heart rate band, bike mat, yoga blocks, yoga strap, uh, the reversible workout mat, which I really love. It's kind of cool. It's got the salmon colored one side and the traditional black. Yeah you know, rubbery mat, uh, glass water bottle, resistance bands, the JBL X Peloton earbuds and the Urban Ears, um, the traditional wired earbuds. Um, But the biggest benefit is really that you can now use your $100 referral credits, which I know a lot of folks were irked that they couldn't, you know, use that to buy dumbbells, you know, because dumbbells are um, pretty popular and they're, they're, you know, rather expensive when you get up there in the uh, higher up in the weight. Um, one small change though, to note is that is made around the free shipping. So apparel orders have historically had free shipping when the order is over $50, which is still the policy, but it now includes any dumbbell weights in your order. So including weights will cause there to be a shipping charge included. The amount will, it'll vary on what you get. Now I know when I've bought weights on the other site, um, I believe shipping was waived over a certain amount there. So I'm not sure how that changes on the apparel side. Um, yeah, I'm not sure either, but all right. Well, I guess But I do know, see. it is good, to, just so you know, we did report, we did first report HIHF on the addition to the apparel store uh, way back in October, so. We started seeing it then, exactly. (laughs) Well, again, if anybody is interested, um, I will just throw this out there. If you haven't, um, you know, completed your 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 shopping and there is still stuff you want to do, um, the Black Friday sales were actually extended and doubled. So that was something that folks could certainly go ahead and utilize whatever savings were being offered um, for Black Friday. So that was um, that was extended. um, Speaking of Black Friday, did you get your three hundred dollar? I did. I haven't said I I haven't gotten mine yet. They said like there was something down with the coach. Yeah, I got I got a call. I was just curious. um, Not only that, what I think. Not only have I received it, but I, my, I've already it. received my, that I used it. I mean, I got my dumbbells and I think that's what pulled my shoulder out because <laughs> uh-huh. I was carrying those heavy dumbbells from my garage up to my, um, my workout room. Um, and of course, didn't separate them and carried them, you know, those 30 pound dumbbells together like an idiot. Um, I don't know who I thought I was, Adrian Williams. I'm not sure. But um, anyway, yes. Well, so I did get mine. Yes, it's so through December six. Okay. Good reminder from the control room. So if you if you purchase the Peloton Row before that Black Friday deal came out, which uh, they also added the Peloton Row to be eligible for it, you can if you chat member support online or if you call in, they will send you via email, which I have not received yet, but they will send you a three hundred dollar credit, a code towards Peloton accessories. Um, which is a very easy process. They'll look you up, your, your purchase date, you know, with your info. And um, even if you pre-ordered yeah. in September, like Amanda and I, and Amanda and myself, one thing I was going to say, I was curious, now that they've added accessories to the apparel site, I wonder if this code can now be used for anything on the apparel site. Or My understanding still... is that it was just for accessories. Um, yeah. So I and a couple of people I think had tried and could not use it on the apparel. So, I, I was just um, curious if anything had changed with that now that yeah. accessories were on the apparel. But I don't think so. Yeah. If I ever I get my code, so. I will give it a try. Oh, John, and, you should definitely call back. Definitely call back. Oh no, if I I've will. looked yeah. at 
at different um, people had said that it just depended on who you got. And I'll be honest with you, I did not get mine right away. So I called that Friday. I didn't get my code until Sunday night um, okay. and then ordered it Monday and had my stuff delivered by the end of the week. So it was great because I had my mat in time because I had not ordered the mat when I ordered my row. So um, oh, okay. I I was glad. I'm really glad that I got the mat. So anybody that hasn't um, who is purchasing rows, make sure you get the mat because I do think it makes a big difference. I do think you really need it. Um, yes. And I um, I don't know if, if anybody else has had this issue, but I noticed with the mat and I, I put my row um, on a board. Um, you said that. You I got a piece that, of plywood, yeah. but I... I noticed um, the mat bunches up kind of easily when you're rowing on it. Mm. So I added a, a ton of double stick tape uh, on the board to basically, okay. uh, so it doesn't bunch up and cause the, the mat to sort of ripple underneath the tread, underneath the, the row rather. Uh, but I wasn't sure if that was a All common right. issue when you're using it. I Anyhow, haven't found that yet, but again, I okay. haven't used it often. All right, moving on. Let's celebrate some birthdays. Happy birthdays, yes. So uh, while we were away, Bradley Rose had his birthday on the 22nd of November. And a big happy birthday to my favorite, my friend, Jen Sherman. Uh, it was her birthday on Thursday, December 1st. Absolutely. All right. And um, I guess next up is instructor in the news. Um, I will kick it off with Kendall. She was in the news again. This time she was featured in wondermind.com um, in an article entitled How Kendall Tool Shows Up When She's Not Feeling 100%. Kendall chatted with Shannon Barber and got real about joining the team and having to manage her anxiety and depression. Um, it was a very raw and open article, um, Kendall just being Kendall. And we've always said, you know, every time we speak about her and she shares, you know, her past, um, how just vulnerable she is. And it's amazing to get to listen to what she has to say or read what she has to say. So I, you know, I, I highly encourage you to head over to pelobody.com to grab that article from Wondermind um, and read it, especially at this time of year when, you know, not everyone is feeling festive. And it's yeah. certainly hard sometimes, um, you know, to put on a happy face. And, you know, she says it's you don't always have to put on that happy face. You can just be you. You can just deal with the struggle and, and reach out for help. And, you know, this is this is a hard time for a lot of people, whether it be because you've lost somebody or because things are, you know, not great. And, you know, we're all coming out of this pandemic in all different ways. And um, just I love the way she's just so vulnerable and shares that, you know, it's okay to not be okay. And, and I think that's a mantra that we all should live by. It, it doesn't always have to be, you know, smiles and, and, and rosiness because it ain't always like that. So um, again, huge kudos to Kendall just for sharing her story and sharing um, how she copes with all of that. Yeah, and I think it's a good reminder because Christmas time, I believe statistically the suicide rate is the highest around... Yeah. Yeah. That holiday, which I don't want to, you know, sound like a downer, but it's good to be mindful about, um, yeah. you know, never knowing what somebody might be going through. Um, right. But Robin uh, Arzon, she was recently in the studio at CBS in New York to give a nice little five minute interview um, talking about her December fitness challenge, um, sharing, sharing some tips to stay motivated. Um, she kicked off talking about her 30 minute a day for 31 days uh, challenge for the month of December, from December 1st to, to the end, uh, December 31st. Basically just 30 minutes a day of movement, um, which she says is totally achievable. Um, anybody can do that. It, it can be broken down. She said, you know, that day she got in a 20 minute run on her tread, but she still had to, you know, finish the 30 minutes, you know, doing 10 minutes or five, you know, breaking it up um, to finish it out for the day. Um, she talked about running as a way to heal, especially um, the one of the interviewers asked her, you know, uh, brought up, you know, traumatic um, situation in her life, uh, you know, where she was based, where she was a hostage held at gunpoint uh, before she went to law school. Um, when she was a student living in New York City. And she also talked about her, her children's books, um, Strong Mama and Strong Baby. So um, you can find that on CBS, um, CBS's uh, website um, if you want to watch the interview. Nice. 
All right, John. Well, I guess we will wrap it up with class picks of the week. And of course, it's two weeks worth. I hope we don't bore you with too many class picks. We'll kind of work, work through them as quickly as possible. And um, John, why don't you kick it off? Kicking it off. Kirsten Ferguson's 30 Minute 2000s Walk from November 18th. We received this one from Z Clods 11 and Coffee Mom Spin. They said the music was fire and her mom was there. I was crying by the end. And Cody's 30 Minute in Sync Ride from November 18th as well. We got that one from Irish Brit, AMA Jar 3, J Cox 13. They said, help me relive the days when TRL and NTV were life. And, you know, I realized that when I talked about the the last time we recorded the LOL Cody with NSYNC member JC Chazé, I totally butch I totally butchered his last name and nobody called me out on it. But I just wanted to apologize. I, I said his name was Jay-Z, JC Chavez. <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, correct that. <laughs> JC Chazé. Too, too funny. I know I probably wouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't have known um, what it was either. So yeah. <laughs> I'm terrible. All right. So moving on, um, Bradley Rose had a 30 minute pop punk ride back from the 19th of November. Um, Amajar 3 recommended this one, said great playlist and loved the Roses Rebel takeover in the studio. So that was fun to get to see. Um, Mila Lazar had a 30-minute hit ride. It was in German. It was from the 24th. Um, And our good buddy, Tony Sinkinson, Sinko, recommended this one saying, mega playlist, very intense ride. Next up is my pick of the week, as well as Lisa Lisa 95, PNS Running Girl, Soul Sister 89, Michelle Felsky, Alex Toussaint's 30 minute turkey bun, turkey burn premiere run from November, Thanksgiving, November 24th. Um, super tough uh, run. Um, I didn't expect anything less, uh, but it was also a lot of fun. People were in the studio cheering Alex on. Um, I love during uh, one of the, I think it was maybe the second song was Cupid Shuffle and Alex was doing this strut like he was heading to the, he goes like, you're going to the kitchen to get another, get another helping of mac and cheese. Um, Just a a great (laughs) run. I got a PR, uh, which is no surprise, Um, but just I'm really looking forward to more um, runs with him and and a great addition to the tread platform with AT. Um, And then Robin's 45 minute turkey burn ride, also from the 24th. We got this from the Sunshine Foodie and Mexican. Uh, they said amazing energy and music. Awesome. And then for those of you that love your boot camps, Cliff Dwenger had an English 30 minute pop bike boot camp from the 25th. And Sue's 2837 recommended this one saying, great to try out a bike boot camp with Cliff in English. Uh, Jocelyn Thompson Rule had a 30 minute full body tread boot camp, also from the 25th. And our good friend, um, Devin, Dr. Devin, recommended this one saying playlist was great and the class was so much fun. Nice. And we have a rowing boot camp. I don't think this, I don't think we've gotten a rowing uh, recommendation no, yet. This since, will be the first. Yeah. Um, Katie Wong's 30 minute Taylor Swift Midnight's. Rowing Boot Camp from the 26th. And we received this from Midwife Lexi. She said, Katie's row boot camps are simply incredible. It was hard to choose just one. I've done uh, a boot camp with her. That was great too. Um, and I also wanted to mention uh, Alex Kowalski's 20 minute 80s row. Uh, probably his awesome. most recent 20 was really good. And he, he actually told some fun stories about his family in it which I thought oh, were nice. great because he, he went to boarding school. I was messaging with him recently. He went to Groton, um, you know, a prestigious boarding school. I think it was in, it's in Connecticut. But that's where his rowing career began with his brother. Uh, but some really funny, then, you know, he's got a big family. So there's some funny stories in there that he shared um, <laughs> with his siblings and his, his parents. Um, so check that awesome. one out if you haven't done that. Yeah. Uh, Ali yeah, I told him to watch. I told him to watch the show, John. So hopefully he's watching this week and he's getting to hear about his wonderful um, rose. <laughs> he's he's been busy, according to Ash and Katie. You know, he he recently got married. He's in grad school. He's got oh, a lot wow. going on. Yeah, yeah he's got a lot going on. Yeah. So, 
Um, All right. Next up is thirty. Uh, Allie loves thirty minute Taylor Swift Midnight's Ride from the twenty six. Lindsay T. Gamble, Jamie Winter, ninety, and Margaret McHatteran, Nutty by Nature, all gave us that one, and they said good programming and vibes. All right, and Jason D. and Die Carve recommended Callie Gullickson's twenty minute Taylor Swift Midnight's Full Body Strength. Also from the 26, they said, awesome playlist by Callie, tried to make people feel like they were at the concert. How cool is that? Um, and then for those um, Saturday 60 lovers, um, Jess Sims, Saturday 60 from the 26, it was a full body tread boot camp. McGurston recommended this one and they said it was the best, hardest, awesome vibe class I have taken yet. Nice. Next up, uh, Lorenal gave us Ben Aldis's 30 minute hit ride from the 27th. They said, great way to get the morning started with this workout. And then Benny Adami's 30 minute Broadway ride, which is his first class in English from the 27th. We received this one from, it's gonna be May 28, and Noah Small and Always Fuji. So positive and uplifting and in English, it was a confetti filled magical love fest on the bike. Um, and it was super fun. I, I wasn't able to do that live that morning because um, we were on the You were driving early. back from a hockey. A hockey we, we were driving I, to Grand Rapids, to Michigan. Hockey. Yeah. All right. The two and a half hour and drive I tell with you, Jackson. It was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. He incorporated his pedoversary in that because I guess he was yeah. one year. It's a, his one year pedoversary. And, um, you know, I was on there. I got up early to do it. And you got a shout out and you weren't even on the goddamn <laughs> ride. I'm like, hello? Like, how he said, did that yeah, he, he goes, he goes, I just figured you were on there. You know, I, I couldn't keep up with all, you know, all the names. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was amazing to, you know, I, I'm so glad that that was one of them. And I should have actually put that in as one of my picks of the week because it really was fantastic. And to have him do a, an English ride was fantastic. So, so glad so many um, enjoyed that and, and recommended it. Well, I really hope we get. Mine. I really hope we get more of them, and we don't have to wait such a long time too. for the next one. I hope. I do too. I do too. I mean, I know it's a lot for them to do German and English, but um, yeah. I got to say they're fantastic, and um, I felt the same way with Jeffrey's English, you know, tread classes. Well, Jeffrey so, and Benny um, both those seem are the only like two that I've done. They both seem like English is is a breeze yes. for them. It doesn't even seem like it's you know it's it's a challenge to have to instruct in English. So yeah, that's just my yeah. impression. They seem like such natural, you know, bilinguals. Definitely Jeffrey. I mean, Jeffrey, you know, his mom's English. So um, I think uh, for him, it really comes, it really comes easy. Um, Benny does sometimes, I, some of the words I can hear, and he, I know he sometimes says to me, did I say that right? And I'm like, you did great. <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah, I think um, they both, they, you know, they do both. Um, they're, they're awesome. All right, moving on. Next one is mine. Um, of course, it's a 45, uh, John Husking's 45 minute 80s walk. And, you know, I love these longer classes, especially if it's something like a walk. Um, I, I was not alone. I had uh, my good buddy, Dr. Devon, and uh, Miss Yo Klotz also recommend this one. The playlist was absolutely fantastic. And um, his parents were in there. Uh, uh, so it was yeah. so fantastic to see his mom and dad in the class. Um, and, you know, it was interesting because I was wondering if he was going to, because they both popped up on my leaderboard. I follow them both. And they both popped up on my leaderboard. And he didn't say anything in the pre-show about them being there. So I was I was curious to know whether he would actually call them out or say something, and he did, and it was beautiful. And there's no question that he has an amazing relationship with his parents, um, and it was really fun to see see them in you know right there, front and center together, you know, with him. So um, awesome walk, and I just hope we get more of those because I love these 45 minutes. Um, and then Tunde's 30 minute bike. Boot camp. It was a core um, uh, strength class uh, or boot camp, and it was from the twenty seventh. Um, Shan spins. Grace Donut Look and Colleen D. Darty all recommended it. Challenging and just so good. Nice. Well, next up we have Matt Wilpers' thirty minute progression run from the twenty eighth. Mackenzie Christoffels gave us that one. They said the coaching was fantastic and the music was great too. And then Aditi's 
five-minute intro to meditation program, welcome. From the 28th also, my life in Toronto said, just started the intro to meditation program and already feeling blessed. And then next up, Rebecca Kennedy's 10-minute core strength, also from the 28th, Spin Loving Mama submitted that. She said, it's a tough one, but it goes by quickly and use uh, a weight for most of the exercise. All right. And we'll round these off with um, Hannah Frankson's 45-minute endurance run. It was from the 28th. I literally got on that run and within five minutes, my phone rang to say that my row was being delivered within 10 minutes. And I didn't know whether I was happy or sad. I think I was happy. <laughs> I didn't say that out loud. 45 minutes. But 45 minutes, and I was going to do it. I hadn't worked out that morning and I figured, all right. And, you know, I still was, I wasn't feeling great because my shoulder was hurting, but it was like, you know what? She was so hyped about doing it. She spoke about how anxious she was and how nervous she was and that she was, you know, really, I loved it. Again, I just love how Hannah, you know, says how says it how it is. And Susie was motivating her in the green room. And um, I was really looking forward to getting on to do it. I probably would have walked some of it, but um I was not alone. And that one was recommended by Lee Kathy W, Cinco, Mandy Rose, Pedal Cranker, Melissa Moves 84, and Rosie and Jim. And the um, the comments were perfection from the coaching to the musing to her STFU minutes. <laughs> and um I'm going to have you do the 45 minutes endurance run to get to get to know what that means. If you know, you know. But Hannah says it as it is. And her STFU, I did go back and see some of the reels and stuff that were posted on that. Posted on that. Um, somebody said, I absolutely loved this because, well, I love anything Hannah. Um, really tough. While Hannah is an elite athlete, she doesn't hide that distance can be challenging even for her. She knows what to say and when to say it and gives you moments of silence to overcome your own head. And then lastly, she said, uh, somebody said she makes everyone feel they can compete, they can complete it regardless of their level. And her playlist is amazing as always. So huge kudos to Hannah um, for being so raw, for getting on there, for doing it and crushing it, absolutely crushing it. All right, next up is um, Mariana Fernandez says 10 minute gratitude meditation in Spanish. And that comes from the beautiful Pelo for Cafecitos. Um, uh, she said, good reminder about being grateful. And then lastly, and to roll it all up is Logan Aldridge's 20 minute premiere run from the 30th. Um, Jeff Kenspin recommended this one saying great to see Logan on the tread and great to see so many other instructors live in the studio supporting him. So um, that is a beautiful set of recommendations. So if you guys haven't taken any of them, there's your um, chance to try some of those out. Lots of kind. It's tough to get bored. It's tough to get bored on the Peloton platform with all That's the stuff true. dropping on a regular basis. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, well, folks, it was a lot. Granted, it is two weeks worth of information we had to put out there for you guys. So um, hopefully we haven't lost some of you along the way <laughs> and you were able to uh, to get through all, um, you know, hour and a half that we'll probably end up uh, presenting to you in this, in this um, podcast. But um, as always, we love to be able to give. I know there were a couple people that were bummed that we didn't um, give you a a show last week, but um, just like this, just like the instructors, we paused and reflected <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. enjoyed Thanksgiving and enjoyed Thanksgiving. Um, but yep, we're back and we're happy to be able to um, share what's been going on in the Peloton world. So um, I guess, John, that's that wraps it all up, right? It does. Let's close it. Let's all close right. her out. Well, close her out. So for me, um, again, thank you so much for taking the time to listen and um, be a part or watch and be a part of um, Pillow Buddies podcast. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now, everybody. And for me here in Michigan, I appreciate you as always tuning in from all over to watch and listen. And as always, we will see you on the leaderboard. Thank you for watching Pillow Buddy TV, your source.
source for everything Peloton. By the community, for the community. Work out with us using the Pelo Buddy TV leaderboard tag and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pelo Buddy. Don't forget that we have a podcast available so that you can listen to us while on the move. Just search for Pelo Buddy TV on any major platform and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.